Have you ever wondered what really happens when our time in this world comes to an end? Is there something more, something beyond the reality we know? Today, we're diving deep into one of humanity's greatest mysteries, what happens after death? And is there truly a heaven or a hell waiting for us? From the moment we are born, life is a journey full of experiences, lessons, and choices. But what if this journey doesn't end when we die? Imagine closing your eyes for the last time, feeling the world slip away, and then, something else begins. Many traditions believe this is just the beginning of a soul's journey into another realm, a passage from one reality to another. But what is that new reality like? What awaits us on the other side? Let's start by imagining the moment of death itself. Some describe it as a serene departure, like drifting into a peaceful sleep. For others, it might feel like a swift transition, a sudden shift from one state of being to another. The soul, they say, leaves the physical body behind, moving into a different dimension of existence. It's as if a door opens to another world, a world unseen, but perhaps more real than this one. Now, this is where things get interesting. Many believe that after death, the soul enters a kind of waiting area, a temporary realm where it pauses before moving on to its final destination. Think of it as a resting place, where the soul reflects on its earthly life, where its deeds and intentions are reviewed, and its next steps are determined. This brings us to the question, is there a heaven or a hell? Let's explore the idea of heaven first. Imagine a place of unimaginable beauty, a paradise where gardens stretch endlessly, rivers flow gently, and every desire of the heart is fulfilled. It's a place where peace and joy are constant, where there is no pain, no sorrow, only a sense of perfect harmony. Those who have lived their lives with kindness, compassion, and sincerity are believed to be welcomed into this heavenly abode, where they can experience eternal bliss. On the other hand, there is also the concept of hell, a place of suffering, of fire, and of regret. But it's important to note that hell is often viewed not as a place of eternal damnation, but rather as a place of purification, a way for the soul to cleanse itself from the stains of its earthly wrongs. The suffering there is not seen as pointless or cruel, but as a process, a process that allows the soul to acknowledge its mistakes, to feel the weight of its actions, and to understand the consequences of its choices. So, how does one end up in heaven or hell? It is believed that every action, every word, and even every thought counts. Our lives are like a book, with every page revealing a part of our story, every action contributing to the narrative. The soul is said to bear witness to its own deeds, with nothing hidden or forgotten. In this view, the afterlife is not random or arbitrary, it is a continuation of our earthly lives, a result of the choices we make and the paths we choose to walk. But what happens when the soul first leaves the body? It is said that the soul encounters an intermediary realm, sometimes referred to as a bridge or a barrier. This is a place of waiting, of rest, and sometimes, a place where the soul undergoes trials or tests. Imagine it as a place where the soul's true nature is revealed, stripped of all pretenses and facades. In this realm, the soul may experience peace or discomfort, depending on the life it has led. This waiting period is not just a passive experience. Some traditions describe it as a time of reckoning, where the soul is confronted with the reality of its actions. The good deeds done in life are believed to provide light and comfort to the soul, while the wrongs committed can manifest as darkness and distress. 
It's a moment of truth, a moment where the soul is faced with itself, without any masks or illusions. And then, there is the concept of the Day of Judgment, a day when every soul is brought forward, and every deed is accounted for. Imagine a grand scale, with every action, intention, and choice weighed carefully. Nothing is overlooked, nothing is forgotten. This is the day of ultimate justice, where every soul is judged fairly and justly. For those whose good deeds outweigh their wrongs, the gates of paradise open wide. For those whose wrongs are greater, the gates of hell may beckon. But what if a soul is somewhere in between? Not quite deserving of paradise, yet not entirely condemned to hell? Here's where another fascinating concept comes into play, a middle ground, a place where souls undergo a period of purification, reflection, and growth. This is seen as a mercy, a second chance for the soul to learn from its mistakes, to understand the impact of its actions, and to strive for a better state of being. It's a place of healing, where the soul is given an opportunity to redeem itself, to transform, and to eventually move toward a better place. It's worth noting that the afterlife is often viewed as a journey, not a final destination. The soul is seen as an eternal traveler, constantly moving, constantly evolving. Some believe that even in the afterlife, the soul continues to grow, to learn, and to reach higher levels of understanding and closeness to the divine. This journey is never static, it is a dynamic process, a constant progression toward a state of perfect peace and contentment. And what about the role of mercy and forgiveness in this journey? It is often emphasized that the soul is never beyond hope, never beyond redemption. Through sincere repentance, through genuine remorse, and through the mercy of the Creator, a soul can find forgiveness. Even the heaviest of burdens can be lightened, even the darkest of hearts can be purified. It is a reminder that no matter how far one may have strayed, there is always a way back, always a chance for redemption. So, what does all of this mean for us, here and now, in our daily lives? It serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of our actions, our choices, and our intentions. It encourages us to live with kindness, with compassion, and with a sense of responsibility, knowing that our lives have meaning, that our deeds have consequences, and that there is a greater purpose to our existence. As we reflect on these ideas, it's important to remember that the journey after death is seen not as an end, but as a continuation, a new chapter in the story of the soul. It is a journey filled with opportunities for growth, for learning, and for finding one's true self. It is a journey that promises something beyond this world, something that awaits each of us when our time here is done. What do you think happens after death? Do you believe in a heaven or a hell, or perhaps something different entirely? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let's explore this mystery together and see what insights we can share with one another. Thank you for joining me on this exploration. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. And until next time, keep pondering the great mysteries of life, and take care.